There's so much talk out there about Ozempic and Wagovi. So today we are going to talk about GLP-1 itself and what it is, and then we'll talk a little bit about the medications and what kind of the rundown is on those for weight loss and disease management. So join me today to talk more about that. I'm Dr. Shelley Meyer. I'm a registered dietitian, functional medicine doctor, and family doctor, and thanks so much for joining me on my channel. I talk here about brain health, gut health, and hormone health, and I have my own functional medicine practice, work with this stuff every day, hundreds of patients. So I love talking about it, and I love um, helping other people figure out their health and figuring out how to boost their health. So today is a little bit different of a topic because I wouldn't really consider GLP ones necessarily a functional medicine kind of topic, but they are very relevant right now. Um, everybody's, you know, in Hollywood talking about Ozempic and Wagovi for weight loss, and so I wanted to go over this a little bit about what it is, what GLP one itself is, how these medications work, pros and cons, and um, kind of what it all the whole picture looks like because that's not often talked about a lot. So, um, background, I worked last year for a telemedicine company that just as part-time while I was doing my functional medicine practice, cause I wanted to learn more about these GLP ones. Um, and that's all they did. This company, um, was GLP one agonist medications, but let's backtrack even a little bit more. What is GLP one? What do I keep talking about here? So it's glucagon like peptide one. And that is a hormone that's produced in the intestines and it plays an important role in regulating blood sugar and even inflammation and how your body responds to the things that raise your blood sugar in your diet like carbohydrates. So that is the GLP-1 hormones. Um, It stimulates the release of, uh, not pancreas, insulin from your pancreas. And insulin helps to then take the blood sugar out of the blood and put it into the cells. A lot of us, particularly in the U.S., are becoming more and more insulin resistant um, and maybe not knowing it because we're not checking that with our doctors. I really recommend that with your primary care doctor you have or your provider that you have a fasting insulin checked every once in a while. It's a way to proactively track your blood sugar um, control and, and risk for diabetes more so than just a fasting blood sugar or an A1C. So um, GLP-1s became a target for originally for the treatment of type 2 diabetes. Oh, and before I forget, um, I did do a a video last week on acromantia, which is a super probiotic strain that can help increase GLP-1 without the risks of these medications, not promising the efficacy or the effects of the, the same weight loss effects directly that these medications have, but it's something you can kind of put in your arsenal and it helps your gut anyway. Um, So let's talk a little bit more about um, GLP-1 medications. So how they would work is what they're called GLP-1 agonists. So that means they help that hormone and hormone receptor work better, meaning the insulin can work better, glucagon gets lowered, blood sugar gets lowered, and metabolism improves. Um, so the examples of these medications are, um, and I, like I said, originally they came out as diabetic medications, and then they, um, the company that makes semaglutide, the Ozempic brand of it, that's originally was marketed for diabetes. Now everybody that can get it is using it, but they also came, that same company came up with Wagovi, which went a little bit higher dose originally. Now Ozempic goes almost to that dose. And is marketed strictly for weight loss. And that's why that one can be more difficult for people to get because of insurance and them them wrongly thinking that weight loss is a cosmetic issue that they don't need to cover. Don't even get me started on that. So there's semaglutide, there's uh, trizeptide, Manjaro is the brand name of that. There is um, liraglutide, which is like Victoza or Saxenda. And then there's Trulicity, and I didn't write down the generic because I usually don't think of them in generic names, which is another glutide or GLP-1 receptor agonist. So these generally are shots, injections, um, that you do weekly usually. Some of them are daily, um, but they also have a pill version. Um, That one is sometimes better used for people that don't tolerate the injections or can't handle injections. Um, but you do have to take it every day and it's sometimes not as effective as the others. The ones that have shown the most weight loss 
from my clinical experience with um, the telemedicine company I worked for, um, our Manjaro is number one, and then uh, Wigovi and Ozempic are equal, and then you're followed up by Trulicity, Victoza, and Sexenda. But the strongest or the ones that have the biggest weight loss can also be the strongest and have the, some of the worst side effects, which stay till the end, and we'll talk about that, and we'll talk about who should not be taking these these drugs. Um, let me backtrack a little bit before I talk about the actual weight loss that can happen with these drugs, but you, what I found in, in a lot of the patients I worked with is they felt full longer because it does also, um, slow down how quickly things move through the stomach. So you're able to feel full longer. So their meal size was and portions were reduced naturally without them having to feel like they were suffering or, um, sacrificing. And then a lot of people would tell me that they didn't crave the carbohydrates that they used to crave. For example, they would have cookies in their cabinet. They didn't want those anymore. Or if they would usually go out and have a dessert, they didn't even want that. So that's really interesting because we haven't really had any other medications or even supplements that can do that. And so it was, it's a really interesting kind of side effect, probably because of, of the better carbohydrate management there. Um, so those are all the things that people experience, and that's kind of how it leads to weight loss. The average of the telemedicine company I worked with that they promised was a 15% average weight loss, but we saw a lot more than that a lot of times, 20%, upper 20s. Um, so we saw some pretty dramatic changes. Some of them were too fast, I thought, but most of them were a nice, slow, gradual weight loss. Um, who, what are the negatives of this medication? And who are the people who should not be on these medications? So anybody with pancreatitis or pancreatic cancer or even other types of cancer, you got to go over that with your doctor. And your doctors probably, or one of these companies like I used to work for, is going to be, um, you know, somebody who's starting. So they're going to be screening you, hopefully. If they're not, then try to find somebody else. So anybody with pan active pancreatic disease, um, definitely they're going to watch your your pancreatic levels, not necessarily those checked, but they do check like your, your liver enzymes. But I, with my patients in my personal practice, do check the pancreatic enzymes as well. And anybody with active gallbladder disease, anybody having bariatric surgery within the last 18 months is not a good candidate. Um, anybody with active type of cancer of, of any sort, um, or a rare condition called medullary thyroid carcinoma or, um, men syndrome, multiple endocrine neoplasia. Pretty rare. I didn't see any of it. I still have yet to see any of it in the practice. I do actually have a, a friend of my daughter who had that, who has that, um, but it's really, really rare. So not papilloid thyroid cancer, not the more common thyroid cancers. Those are not contraindicated. It's this unique and um, not very common at all uh, medullary thyroid cancer. So you do, they do monitor thyroid too as well, or the company I used to work for does. And I do personally with my patients and your doctor should too, to make sure it's well controlled before you start on your, um, if you're going to start on these medications before you start on them. They also can cause some very significant nausea. So much so that people, we would have to have all these tips and tricks and sometimes medicines to counteract the nausea. So you do want to think about that if you suffer from nausea. We suffer from like gastroparesis, not a good probably combo for you. Headaches, I saw some pretty significant headaches with these medications. Constipation was a big issue with these medications. And then they were, they are originally and are diabetic medications. So though they don't act like insulin or any of the, you know, glucose lowering kind of pills that are the older fashioned kind of uh, diabetes pills, they can overall lower your blood sugar. So you can have like low blood sugar symptoms if you already started out with lower blood sugars. That's something you do want to monitor with your doctor or your team and just be in touch about that. Other downside is these are super expensive. Um, I have had reps come to my office saying there's better coverage lately. We are testing that theory out in my office, but they're very difficult for your provider to order for you. So you can't expect just to go to your provider and be like, I want to get on Ozempic or Wagovi. Let's get this done. They give me thousands of dollars out of pocket and insurance companies, wrongly so, I believe, are not covering them for the most part, but it's getting better. Like I said, I just talked with a rep the other day for Wagovi and she said it's getting better. Um, there's more coverage with federal plans 
and you just have to try and your doctor can try for you. Now, these telemedicine companies that focus on these as their cornerstone treatment do have a whole team of people doing it. Whereas a doctor's office like mine, where we're very small, we don't have a whole, whole team of people doing it. So if your doctor's not able to get it or you can afford one of these other programs, that might be the way to go. But just make sure that you talk about pros and cons and, and work with them closely and don't get lost in the mix of big numbers that they have there. Um, so it can be difficult to get. That's one of the downsides. You may want to start with um, Acromancia, that probiotic that I was talking about, and you can get 15% off that or um, your first subscription or 10% off just in my dispensary. All those details are below and then they're in the last video too. Or you can consider one of the telemedicine companies. You can work with your doctor on it. You don't necessarily have to have diabetes. Wagovi is the one that's um, trademarked for not for diabetes. So as long as your doctor is monitoring everything closely, you don't have to have diabetes. But again, it's going to be more difficult for you to get the medication if you don't have diabetes. That's what I found as far as proving it to insurance that you need it. Um, and they can be hard to tolerate, so definitely work closely with your doctor on that. So GLP-1 is an important hormone that can help re regulate our metabolism. Another interesting thing from I learned from working for this telemedicine company is that after people came off, and people don't stay on these medications forever, diabetics may need to, but those that aren't diabetic usually taper off towards the end of the program, they maintained their weight loss. Even if they, I don't recommend this, but even if they went back to their old way of eating, they still maintained a significant amount of their weight loss. So it can kind of permanently shift. This GLP-1 mechanism can kind of permanently shift metabolism, which is really interesting. And it's a very promising treatment for diabetes and lowering the risk associated with that, not just for weight loss. It can also improve cholesterol numbers and reduce the risk of plaque. So that's another interesting thing and reduce inflammation altogether. So... The cool medication, some risks involved, have to handle it on an independent, individual basis with your provider to, talk, to figure out if it's for you. But also recommend, you know, looking at things from a functional medicine perspective, looking at your gut, your hormones, your um, stress, your diet for sure. And the telemedicine company I worked for did have coaching one-on-one, -on -one, so they did do very well with, with working with people on their diet, but it's just not a one size fits all. Everybody's going to lose all this weight just from this medication. You want to look at the whole picture is what I'm trying to say. So thanks so much for joining me today. If you have any questions, comments, let me know in the comments and be sure to like and subscribe and share this video if you enjoyed it and we'll see you next time.